What's going on guys, King Shratz here back with another video on the channel and today we made potato skins. It is the most arduous, annoying thing that I've done to date. So yeah, let me break down how we did it. First we tied some potatoes, obviously we had to roast them off so we poked holes in them with a fork and put some salt and olive oil on top of that. Into the oven they go, 400 degrees for about an hour. Once those get tender enough and they cool off, you have to cut them in half, hoop out the middle until there's about a quarter inch left of potato. You wanna have enough to make sure that the tail skin doesn't fall apart. Um, after we do that, we season them back up. A Little bit of butter spray, parsley, garlic, pepper, salt. That's it, back into the oven they go. Uh, skin side down, you have to season both sides. 15 minutes until they get a little golden brown. Flip them over, about another five minutes. At the same time, I also browned off some ground beef, which of course I seasoned. I don't have that filmed. I mean, I hope <laughs> browning ground beef isn't the hardest thing in the world. Uh, but I did also saute some onions. I caramelized them. You can see me throwing the onions in there, a little bit of olive oil. We cook those down until they get that nice brown, <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm starting to drool, color. Then we take the ground beef mixture on the bottom, a little bit of cheese, caramelized onions, a little bit more cheese. Back into the oven they go <laughs> for, um, I believe I did them for seven minutes until they came out, topped them off a little bit of chives, and that is what you see in front of you. They look and smell so, so delicious. On the side, I do have some of the chimichurri that I had from my mukbang I did with the uh, Argentinian pizza. I still have some, so one like I wasn't gonna put it out to waste. And I also have the uh, mayo sauce that I used with the crab in my mukbang from last week. I didn't want to get rid of it. I also do have some whatever the heck this is garlic buffalo ranch and that what it says yeah uh, i found this in the store a little while ago but i still have never used it last but not least we have some soft baked cookies of the pillsbury joints i started reviewing yesterday i'll be having those at the end of my meal so we have a uh, confetti and what i get a sugar cookie right i got sugar cookie with a drizzle some kind of drizzle on it i think i covered everything right think so. If you are digging the content, you want more of the home cooked, you want more of the explanations, my budget recipes, <laughs> the best that I could possibly do, uh, more of the reviews, whatever you want to see, drop the thumbs up, uh, like, subscribe. It really does help uh, the channel. It helps me know that I'm putting out content that people do want to see, but without me talking too much after I explain that whole thing, let me grab one of these. I want to grab like a, like a, yeah, yes, no. I don't know, let's just do you. No, I don't want you. I want you. Like it matters, I'm gonna eat all of them anyway. So dig the, oh my goodness. All right, so dig that. Caramelized onions, ground beef. I was going for like a patty melt and then I started freestyling. So first bite, no. That's really good. That is really good. Did I mention that was really good? All right, let's get some of that mayo on there. I didn't have sour cream. I didn't plan on making these, I'll be honest. Last minute. As usual. <clears throat> Man. I didn't want to make like basic potato skins with cheese and bacon. So I decided to switch it up a little bit. Try something new, something weird. I gotta do this again. There's so many different possibilities you can have with these boats from heaven. So until time. There's a lot of cheese on here. The onions are covering it, so it looks pretty stupid. You can hear the outside the skin's got a little crisp to it. But I'll just show you by breaking it. They're soft. They're not extra burnt, extra crispy. Balance size got a good bite to it though. What really makes these, that caramelized onion. Mm. I originally intended on making patty melts, but I bought these potatoes a little while ago and I know they had to get eaten soon. So I was like, okay. I'm just taking you through where my mind goes when I cook because I, I, I legitimately do not plan these meals. So I had the bread, but I was like, yo, I gotta use the potatoes. So the original thought was to just make like a cheeseburger potato, which is kind of what this is, potato skin. But I saw the onion in my fridge and I was like, yo, I got these chopped up, like let's do something. 
So I caramelized them and put them on top. And it was kind of like last minute. And I knew I had to do something with these potatoes. Where does my mind go? This is really how this happened. So I'm talking to all my friends and they're like, yo, I make bomb potato skins. Them, not me. And I'm like, honestly, I've never made a potato skin. So they're telling me a little bit about how they make them. I was like, bet. It's my first time. They're good. Oh my goodness, so good. Perfectly seasoned. I gotta make this again, man. Mm, goodness. I wanna try this ranch too. Hold on. I think I tried this like a grand total of once. And I was like, I don't really remember what it tasted like. So let's get it on a little bit here. I hope it's good because I just wasted, I used way too much. All right. Garlic Buffalo Ranch. That's what it looks like, by the way. Kind of looks like crap. That's really garlicky. Getting the spice at the end too. That's not bad. I originally planned to make baked potatoes like last week when I did like, I think I did a steak and I bought these for the steak. I am probably one of the worst planners you'll ever meet. This is so good. 16 potato skins for dinner. What a W. Planning makes me anxious. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty open about my, uh, my mental health. I don't even call them issues anymore, man. They're not issues. People got way worse problems than I have. So... You know, my mental health, whatever the heck you want to call it. I used to get really bad panic attacks. And I think a big part of it was when things didn't go the way that I planned them. Uh, I would get, I guess, anxious. And it started to, to get worse and worse. I started to worry about more things that didn't go my way, I guess. Until I ended up having full-blown panic attacks for, like, no reason. So one of the things that I did for myself, um, I, 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 I do think that if you're having, like, really bad panic attacks or, like, anybody who's dealing with those kind of issues, it's going to sound like a contradiction. I strongly advise you to get the help you need. Um, sometimes having someone else in your head, uh, someone else to listen to, someone else to kind of be a third party, whether that be therapy or anything. Um, you know, professionals are professionals for a reason. And with that being said, I didn't go to therapy. I was advised to go to therapy. Um, I was also advised to take medication I refuse both. Um, probably shouldn't have. <laughs> but I got good at self-diagnosing myself. Sounds weird. And kind of helping myself. Um, one of my issues that I have in my own stuff is that I don't want help from anybody, <laughs> ever. Like, ever. Like, you could offer me money and I, I don't want it. Like, I'm, I'm that way. I'm just built that way. So, 
So, going to doctors and therapists only gave me more anxiety and made me mad, which is crazy, but true. So I'm like, man, nobody, you know, nobody cares. <laughs> and, um, that's another thing I say all the time is that no one cares um, when it comes to your own problems. Like, no one cares. Um, that's, that's, again, everything I'm saying is contradictory to what reality is. But I'm telling you where my head was at that point. People do care. That's a stupid thing to say. But anyway, one of the things I did to help myself was I learned to let go of the wheel. I learned to stop planning so much. And it's almost to the point where I don't plan anything, and that includes my meals. I outline things. I give myself room to adapt, to, to do whatever it takes within that situation. Um, I think you shouldn't just walk around doing whatever you want to. That's not what I'm saying. I kind of say, and then I'm, I'm giving you an example of food in this case. All right, I bought potatoes, I bought this. So I have guidelines. I have foods that I'm supposed to eat, but give yourself some wiggle room to kind of have some fun with it. Um, instead of saying, oh, well, I have to make this this exact way. It doesn't turn out this way. Like, I don't know how this is going to turn out when I cook it. So, that's kind of how I live my life. I live it very much in the moment. Um, really, what I do is every day when I wake up, I know what I have to do that day. And I don't worry about yesterday. And I don't worry about the day after. Every day when I wake up, I say, okay, this is the move for today. And I know what needs to be done. And I do it to the best of my abilities. That's it. So, a lot of people have these plans, like these, they have to be doing something by this age. They have to be making this much money. By, uh, money is not the most important thing in the world. Um, it is important, though. Don't get it twisted. Like, I'm, nobody's trying to be broke, too. But I think that too many people judge their character based off their bank account, and I don't think that's a good way to live. Um, just because you make more money than somebody doesn't make you're better than them. Um, it doesn't mean you're a better person than them. It just means that you've got more zeros in your bank account. And if that's what you, you know, quantify your happiness based upon, um, more power to you. You know, I... I of course, I'm not trying to be poor, and I'm also, money is not the most important thing to me. To me, money is always a byproduct of, of what you do. Not all the time, but if you take care of business, and this is what I mean by planning, the money will come, as long as you have an idea of where you're headed, but not necessarily like this long-term laid out, I have to have this done by this time. There's no timetable to being successful. There's no timetable to being in shape. There's no timetable to, you know, getting married. Like, there really isn't. Now, I think too many people make irrational decisions based off of those plans. You'll marry somebody that you don't really love because you're 28 and you feel like you had to be married by 28. So you're like, okay, well, they're here. Cool. You now what happens? You end up divorced at 30. Or the person who says, I have to be making this amount of money by this age. Social media has really skewed um, wealth. Everybody thinks they're supposed to be a millionaire by the time they're 24 now, which is absolutely freaking ridiculous. We live in such an instant society, like instant success, instant love, instant popcorn. <laughs> You know, instant fat loss, instant, everything has to be done in the short time, and, and like, sometimes, like, you don't realize that you're, you might not be ready when you think, but you see these celebrities that are, you know, and this isn't negative, I'm just saying the reality, like, everybody thinks they're supposed to be Kylie Jenner, like, I understand she's really young, and she's, like, worth a billy, she's an anomaly, respectfully, I am not talking down on her success. I'm like, she's done great things. As much as people want to hate on her, like, I don't care what you say. Like, you gotta be doing something to, do, to make that much money. But, 
that is an extreme outlier. <laughs> but everybody only sees that. You know, they, they just think everything happens overnight and they get, like, frustrated when it doesn't. Most things take time. Yeah, there's some people who have overnight success, but most of them don't. Some of the most famous musicians, some of the most famous actors, at one point were told they could never get a job. You know, some of the most successful athletes were, you know, everybody tells the story of Michael Jordan getting cut from, you know, the JV team and it's up. I mean, can you imagine being that coach? <laughs> but... Most of those people were kicked out of venues, kicked out of, like, it's not normal. You know, and too many people these days think that stuff's just going to happen because, like, you want it or because you deserve it or, like, the world doesn't work that way. And that's what stopped me from planning. That seltzer's really good, by the way. I just smashed like 13 potato skins. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. You know. Now, nowadays, like, because of social media, like, you know, old footage is popping out of like the craziest celebrities back when, like, no one cared. And it's the truth. And I think people need to understand that. The path to wherever you have to be. It's not a straight line. And there's peaks and there's valleys and there's U-turns and there's forks in the road and speed bumps and everything that you can imagine. Now, I don't care who you are. There's going to be dark days. There's going to be great days. There's going to be okay days. But the whole point is to just keep kind of pushing. And just take care of what you're supposed to take care of. You know, I don't, who knows, you might be watching this in three years, and I might have, you know, <laughs> a lot more subscribers than I do now, or something like that. I mean, I see the comments people just make, you know, you know, the, I'm talking positive comments too. People are like, man, your, your content's great, you know, you, you deserve some, I don't, like, you know, so many more views and subscribe. I don't deserve anything. I appreciate, like, people saying stuff like that, I do. But I don't deserve anything. To me, if I continue to put out content, then the, the people decide that, not me. I don't deserve it. If I do, then it'll happen. But I, I have said this a bunch of times. I never check my sub count. Um, I don't check my views. I, I do sporadically check my views only for one reason. Um, if I'm doing something new, if I do something that I haven't really done and, and it's well received, um, then I'll do more of it. You know, that's kind of the indicator. So if this video gets way more, you know, thumbs up and things like that, then I'll do more like that. Well, that's the only reason I don't check number of subscribers because I feel like, what, if I didn't, if I don't hit this milestone by this time, then like I'm a failure. I don't look at it like that. You know, you guys tell me anyway. <laughs> so, I've never done that. You know, I, I don't stare at the numbers at my, my gym, my, my, my real life, my real life, <laughs> my job, my business. I don't stare at the numbers. I worry about the work. I just do my part. I cannot, and, and one, that's just another thing that stopped me from panicking so much. I cannot handle the world around me. I can handle my actions, and I can handle my reactions. That's all I can do, you know? So I don't worry about the numbers. I worry about the work. If I'm doing the work, then that's my part. It's not my part to make people receive it. You know what I mean? If you like it, I'm so happy that you do, but I can only be myself and work on making better content for whatever reason. Somewhere lost in everything I'm saying is how good this is. Um, but yeah. Just like, I can't handle what people say to me on here. 
you know. I will say this. I've been on, I'm on multiple platforms now. Instagram is my main one. Um, the response on YouTube has been, like, overwhelmingly positive. Um, like, overwhelmingly. Yeah, there are some trolls and some negative stuff. Like, that comes with the territory. And that's, like, I can't handle my, my what I'm doing if, again... People are triggered by the food that I eat or like, you know, that kind of stuff or, or like, you know, they want to give me a thumbs down in the first 10 minutes of the, like, you know, that I put the video up. Um, I can't change that. I can only handle change my reaction to it. And that's what I mean. You can handle your actions and your reactions, but that's it. You know? And I know that as a content person that makes content, People, some people forget that, like, there's a person here, you know, and that's why I never mess with people on the internet, because you don't know what that person's going through, you know, any YouTuber, uh, influencer, celebrity, you know, going up the tier to whoever, you don't know what they're going through. And I know it seems kind of easy to make targets people like that, whether they be, you know, celebrities that have, you know, millions or even like, you know, followers and people that that doesn't mean you're happy. Being rich doesn't mean you're happy. Being a celebrity doesn't mean you're happy. And social media has kind of soured that note a bit for some time. It's one of the greatest things ever, social media. There's a lot of awesome people on social media. There's a lot of cool people. There's also a lot of toxic people, you know. And those people that get satisfaction out of trying to upset someone, I don't get it, but, excuse me, they exist, and it's, it's crazy, but, you, I said this about my, I, I don't know what other people are going through, but I told you, I came clean about it, I guess, in January, but the month before that, the entire month, like, my mom was literally in the ICU um, with tubes in her, you know, and it wasn't looking good, and I got people telling me, you know, F me because I didn't eat a Big Mac the right way, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just like, I'm sorry that I didn't eat the Big Mac, but I'm not saying this as a feel sorry for me thing. I'm moving this right over here. I'm saying this more of like, there's just bigger things to worry about, but the only thing that I could handle when it came to that is my reaction, you know? I could have, trust me, there are times where I could be like, you know, I'm human. Like I sometimes I don't like comments I get and I'm, I feel like saying something, but I, majority of the time don't. No. Sometimes you catch me on the right day, yeah, but I, I try not to. But you know that's giving people the reaction they want to see. Anyway, oh, let me get into some of these. We got the soft bake, the confetti, and these are. Let's see. Yes, there you go. Sugar with drizzled icing and confetti. Um, there are a few more, but I kind of wanted to go with these because I've always liked like funfetti and confetti and you know, like anything drizzled, like you drizzle stuff on stuff. Like I'm here for that. So I got my uh, almond milk. I gotta get some of these cookies out. I said this yesterday when I tried the first ones. Um, I like them. I'm not the biggest fan of fat fingers. This is why I open stuff beforehand. I'm not the biggest fan of like the soft bake. I prefer like the the the, the crunch when it comes to these kinds of cookies. Not in general. Excuse me. So, get these out. Oh, these are pretty. Take you on a date. Talking about some fine stuff. Come here. Yeah, that's low. <laughs> there you go. All right. I want to try these now, too, because I didn't notice the icing's pink. Like, what are we saying? First bite, no milk, though. Gotta get it in the milk. They're good. I feel like the icing doesn't taste like anything.
the sugar cookie is like really over. I, I just taste like a good sugar cookie. Um, I, don't know, I just don't like the consistency of these sometimes. I'm still finna eat them. I'm fat. But I gotta be uh, objective here. Let me try these confetti ones though. Um, that's not a good start. I wasn't supposed to do that. I'm sorry. Those are good. That's good. That's good. Did you get the little sprinkles in there? There's definitely whole sprinkles. These are a W. These are mad. The icing doesn't really taste like anything. But adding those sprinkles in here. Did I just say sprinkle? I don't think I've ever actually said the word sprinkle in my life. Yeah, get these. Confetti joints. If you like like the confetti pancakes or like the funfetti cake. These are a dub. Not only are they a dub, but they're 10 less calories than uh, these average sugar cookie ones. I like these a lot. They kind of taste like shortbread cookies, which I love. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with a brand. It's called Lorna Dune. They like a little. They got a little girl on the cover, uh, and they got it's like yellow. And the the, uh, the writing is blue. How do I know this? Well, story time part two. This won't be a shorter one while I eat the rest of these cookies. Uh, growing up, I think I've said this part, but my mother was definitely the type of person who had her own stuff. Um, don't touch her stuff. Um, I dare you to touch her stuff. You ain't touching her stuff. And for the most part, that was like snacks as well as uh, soda. She loved her soda. And I say loved uh, because she doesn't drink a lot of soda anymore. But back then, she she definitely drank non-diet regular cola, you know. <laughs> I, can, I never drink soda, so, but it would always be in her bedroom, hidden somewhere. Um, and one of those things, I like these cookies a lot, were those cookies, Lorna Dune shortbread cookies. I used to love them cookies. They're like kind of crumbly and shortbread and like real buttery and mm, right? So, I might have like snuck in a room, taken them from time to time. So, I'm fine. Did y'all do that? Don't act like when people wrote their name on stuff, you don't eat it anyway. Yeah, I stole my mom's cookies. She had like 10 in there, I'm gonna eat like three. And did she catch me? Catch me. Yeah, she caught me, bro. <laughs> she caught me every time. I would leave her some though. What a complete jerk. When she come in, she always mispronounced the name. She would be like, who ate my Lorna Derns? So first of all, that's not even a person. I ain't said I would have gotten, no, I would have been missing some teeth, but I thought it. Anybody out there who doesn't have a black parent, let me tell you something about black parents, okay? <laughs> uh, my fellow black people watching this, you're going to probably know where I'm going with this. Don't ever correct your parent, especially in my case, my mother. Even if they're wrong, just let them do it. Don't correct them. Mm -mm. You never know when you're going to need this information to other uh, people who don't have black parents. Shit, your parents might be like that too. You know, I only go off of the ones that I have. Uh, and my friend's parents who are also black. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, don't like, like if my mom said who ate my Lorna Dern cookies, guess what? They was Lorna Dern cookies for the time being. I wasn't finna correct her. Um, I think I finally did correct her. Maybe like four years ago. I was, I was like in my 20s back then, so. It was cool at this point. But as a kid, hmm. If you did, one of two things is going to happen. You were either A, going to have something thrown in the general direction of you. Hopefully it doesn't land, but it probably will, because parents don't miss with things that they throw. Um, or B, uh, they were going to yell something along the lines of, well, that's how I bleep and say it, so that's how it's supposed to be said. It's pretty much only two options. 
And I don't know if your parents never missed when they threw stuff, but mine didn't. No. I can't even tell some of them stories. <laughs> uh, uh, in, in short, these kind of sucked. Um, these are delicious. Don't get those. Definitely get these. They like little just confetti wops. I mean, uh, there's nothing better than like downing the milk after you're done. Highly satisfying meal. Um, I basically just ate an entire bag of potatoes in front of you, covered them and stuff, and ate them. And then uh, there's one row of cookies left, so that was another like 900 calories. Casual. Just casual. Keep it casual. Anyway, uh, that was delicious. Um, I do got some stuff in the works. I know I keep saying that, but there really is. I've been talking to a lot of different whatever. Um, some of the stuff has already been done. Um... I don't really tell y'all like that kind of the business end of it. But anyway, again, I want to thank you guys like for your support. A lot of you guys watch the content every day, which is like, you know, in a good way, like insane. Like, I love that. Like, I love y'all. Some of you guys tell me that you literally like, you know, watch like a podcast and you sent me pictures of you watching me on television talking like this. And a lot of times the picture I'm frozen and I'm like, and y'all be snapping it. Uh, you know, I love y'all, but can y'all please take some flattering photos of me? Um, if you're going to take... <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all, man. Anyway, uh, it's been real. I got to go to bed. It's actually early for me. No, it's not. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Actually, usually it's 4. Um, so we'll be back. I think I got to cook again tomorrow. Right? Right. More content. I love y'all to hand signs. Yeah. They made it to YouTube.